Terra firma is Latin for the earth beneath our feet, uh, the firmament of the earth. Terra firma comes from a way of speaking about the earth as a feminine entity. And there was something about the connection between environmentalism in her work and feminism. And wanting to point out our marks upon the earth, our wanting to take advantage of the earth and lord over the earth, and a parallel in history of our treatment of women. And Kim took it one step further, and even the way the words terra firma were written with the phonetics that she used that help you visually sound out the word, it became a presence, even to the point of the R. The symbol of the R is two triangles uh, to create that sound, one pointing up and one pointing down, and it, it creates a, a, an hourglass shape, the, the shape of a woman, and the shape also of the earth and the sky and our relationships there. So the real process of the show was me trying to come down from the sky, which is where most of my thoughts usually reside, and to really think about that idea of finding one's grounding. It's not really flightiness as much as always dreaming about ideas. I'm very visual in the way that I think of ideas. It's, it's not something that I intellectualize, though I think in the end what my work is, is a story. I think it's more like a puzzle where for whatever reason I think visually, I'm given all these pieces, but with a no explanation of why I'm being given these parts. And through the process, and then usually it takes given some time, I understand what the message was intended to be. One of the first works I ever encountered of Kim's was the smog collectors. I was intrigued by the idea of using smog as a medium to create artwork uh, and how immediate and direct that was. And she's showing us the system of how smog is created from using car mufflers as the legs of dining room table, baby bassinet. Uh, in the furniture of the room to then the food that is on that table being made out of the smog. Having lived downtown, it was a little bit hard not to see that the smog was in the air. And so the idea is that I would make a stencil and I would put them on different objects and plates and I would put them on my rooftop and the smog is very heavy so it would fall on there. And once I would remove it, the image was made only from that particulate matter. I made portraits of all the presidents from McKinley to Bush and I left them out longer if their environmental records were bad. I often tell the story that people used to call the smog fog if I would complain about it. So I've really seen that environmental movement change. You know, at this point, I really realized that there are many environmental artists. The categories and topics are really covered in a lot of kinds of ways. So a lot of my attention in some ways starts going to issues like the way we interact with each other. Because based on doing the environmental work alongside doing the work about domestic violence, it doesn't take too long to start to understand that the violence that we put onto other people is the same violence we put into nature.
So the Pearls of Wisdom really came about um, because I was working with an organization that had asked me to design a project. The organization is called A Window Between Worlds, and they work with um, families that are pulling out of domestic violence or trying to and she picked the metaphor of a pearl because much like how a pearl is created when some kind of a negative or a, a, you know, an irritant, if you will, gets into the mollusk, instead of the mollusk dying or letting the irritant take over, what the mollusk does is it creates protective layers around that negative thing, that irritant, which in turn creates a beautiful pearl, much like those of us such as myself that have experienced and moved through myself personally sexual assault, I can now see kind of on the other end of it, the really the knowledge and the wisdom and the resilience that I gained as a result of moving through that. And so my pearl of wisdom, and that's what I represented on here, was get somewhere safe and call someone safe. This is literally me getting somewhere safe and calling someone safe to escape a sexual assault. For me, the experience of creating the pearl was really um monumental because I had never really sat there and thought about what had happened to me. But the process to me was so empowering because I still remember wrapping that chain around with the casting material. It was like I'd broken my arm like two or three times. So the material just felt so familiar and I thought, wow, you heal. You heal by putting that. It gives you time to think, because when you're doing something with your hands, you allow your thoughts to flow. So the process of doing that pearl just allowed me to feel all the steps, you know, the pain, the hurt, the emotion that it wouldn't go away. And then the coming together of like, I'm stronger than this. He never broke me. I'm still here. All together, for me, it's like a choir singing. And in my own personal home experiences, I know that these people that can pull out of this are, they're athletic in like a physical and spiritual sense. They're heroes and heroines that can do this to pull through. I'd say Kim really viewed folks that have experienced trauma not as victims, but more as survivors and even taking it to the next level, warriors. Really those that are out there that have experienced something but have moved through it and now are fighting for those who are still maybe trapped in darkness. And Kim is in her warrior phase and brought a lot of us along with her. I'm right now working with incarcerated women up in Santa Monica Mountains, and I'm creating a series of suitcases or valises that will be taken around by uh, rangers at the National Park Service to teach people about fire prevention and our relationship to nature again and firefighting. As part of their incarceration, they're fighting all these fires you guys are seeing all over the place, okay? And these women are actually at the front line of it all. They're the ones clearing at the edge of these fires so that the fire presumably won't jump over. They're really impressive people, you know, to do this. You know, a lot of these uh, people that are incarcerated are very talented. I swear to God, half of them are artists and, you know, just, I just didn't get caught, okay? So, um, so I'm always going up there kind of eyes open because the design of these valises really has to do with what they're telling me about firefighting. That's maybe the more obvious element, but I start seeing the way they're dealing with materials I bring up or what they're making, and then I try to riff off that. Yeah, see, that's really where I learned tenacity is from the women in difficulties, coming out of difficulties, because they will be so open and honest about it. I think I was always born to be more on the brave side of things. You might even call it recklessness at some points, but to me it's really about people's survival instincts 
and knowing that no matter what the odds are, that life is an important thing to, to have, that it's a gift to have it and, and we need to nurture it. So the relationship between where people would make their own signs of life and where they would live, maybe it's a box, maybe it's a more extravagant structure somebody has put together with things they've found, and that relationship to the trees was very striking to me. So I did decide on foot that I would actually find the trees in the neighborhood. I really wanted to be real specific about where they were and so on. And then as another part of that, I decided that I would, again on foot, locate all the homeless encampments in that same area that I was investigating. And it's kind of the attitude I'm trying to share with you now. It's like if I had been in a car and gone around and found them and written them down and taken them a photograph, what a coward, right? It really required me to make a risk here because those people are making a risk. They have risk in their lives, right? So I can't like do it from a Mercedes, right? I don't know, I said the word, remember I told you how hard integrity is? It is, I mean, we can only strive for it. We don't ever get there. You can only like try for that, right? And so to me, not only the Joan of Arc work, but all the work, like even the Calamity Jane work or the Ann Lee, it's really a lot about the, the women's relationship to their locations and to their, it's not even their homes actually, it's places that they've created to be their homes. So for me, that's a real physical image. It, reminds me of soil and the importance of caring for the earth and it it really has all those resonances to it so it's kind of an unexpected relationship to that work i think um because part of the other part with the joan of arc work is really that i just i i realized when i was researching her that all these famous images that we see of her in paintings and sculptures were done hundreds of years after she lived. And the ones that we really know the best were all done by men. And so this idea that we would, as females, be able to take her back, like she's she's our heroine. We deserve her. You got plenty of heroes out there you can tap into. Throughout the exhibition as a whole, we wanted to tell a story about how we treat our humans, especially humans that we have not historically given power to equally, and, uh, and how we lord our power over the earth. And also do that in a way that just shows the systems and shows our mythologies that we put over the top of these ideas, whether it's the mythologizing of nature or the mythologizing of a historical figure, and how those mythologies play into our, uh, our game as humans of uh, co trying to control our environments. And she is not giving us artwork that says, hey, we've treated women poorly throughout history. She's giving us artwork that shows the beautiful stories of these individual women, but also highlights that they, they came to be known in history in a variety of ways. And, you know, most of them had some very difficult challenges from uh, Calamity Jane to, uh, to Joan of Arc. So the piece with all my identification on it is really a self-portrait. If it's got this parallel story, it's the story of Pope Joan, different from Joan of Arc, that was said to be the only female pope. And when they found out she was a female, they stoned her to death. So 
I really wanted to deal with that. And I and it made me think of all these identification cards and my birth certificate and all these documents that all of us really have through our lives. We become this collection of these documents that are really intended to prove who we are so that it really seems to matter not very much that I can touch you and that you're there and we can converse. It's really, I need to see your card. I need to see your identification. And if you don't have it, you might as well not exist. And for me as an artist, it felt really gutsy to put all of me out there very clearly like that. It was the best of what my life has been and the worst. There's like welfare cards on there as well as me teaching at very prestigious universities and in private schools and so on. So, and it was everything in between. And so I like the idea that I would really present myself so nakedly, really, to everyone. If there is a thread that goes through all the work in the show, I was trying to picture all the pieces in the show to see how accurate this is. Every single piece has to do with my life at that time. I've been in situations with domestic violence. Did I know that when I started with those people? No, it was totally buried in my tough way of going through life. Or my feeling about the trees and the aerial view. It was because I was so upset I had no place to walk this dog. St. Bernadette, it's because for a while my work felt such like a commodity. Dealers just wanted me to pump out works that were selling well and they couldn't get enough of it. And when I wanted to change the way the work was, they got very upset. So that's like St. Bernadette's story that at first people didn't believe her. And then the next thing you know, they're trying to make a buck off her image on holy cards down the street without her knowing it. I think that when you do political work, you have to have a personal investment in it. It can't just be you read this stuff and now you got a cool image. I mean, that is one way of working, but for me, unless it's kind of so confusing within me that I really need to seek the answers through the work, then I'm not so interested in it. One of my first encounters with Kim Abelese was in Prague when she was in a group show of American and Czech artists called Dialogue Prague LA. And uh, Kim's piece was a giant mapping of the city of LA and mapping all the public spaces. So all the other artists, uh, they're all seeing the sites of the city for a week or so and then spending a day putting up their work. But not Kim. She and her fiancé were in their hotel room with giant maps of L.A. and maybe tens of thousands of poker chips and wires wiring this thing together day and night. The outside world went away with her work, her dedication to that storytelling uh, and mapping something, finding a system that tells us a story and then like nothing daunts her. That's when I really gained so much respect for her as an artist, for her methods and her ability to tell a story and not back down from it. She does not compromise. Kim is one of those women from her biography series. Oh, are you seeing what does my soul look like? I actually have an image of it. It's this. So what it is is actually, uh, it's a lantern with tears coming out of it. And that's what that image, I one day had an image of my soul. So, you know, you're asking a question without expecting I have an illustration for it. I think it takes a lifetime to really feel oneself and not get distracted by other labels people try to put upon us or expectations that are you know, forced upon us. I, I just think it really takes 
every day of effort to really unfold that enough that then you really are willing to really listen to other people because in the end that idea of understanding one's interior self really isn't about the self after all is it it's really about some kind of quality connection with other people the more i get into the world sometimes i have to back up and go oh god did i make art is this art that i made or is this an activity with people you know i think um it it's always kind of a uh, an issue with me like where does the art end and the people begin and we're you know and, and that engagement this sense that I'm not only making art but I'm also really a part of the world and somewhere I have to engage with that not just ignore it like it's a secondary issue um, really never left my heart I love the work of Kim Abeles because her work is not only presented in a beautiful way, but also it has a lot of meaning when it comes to different social issues, which I think is very important. And with the opportunity of looking at those pieces, we can discuss so many social issues. Uh, one of the best things I like about it is the little chair over there. Like it's it's like a chair built a lot out of like straight credit cards and like social security card ideas. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but it's unique at the same time. When I saw like the 3D stuff and all the models, I was impressed. I want to do something like this when I'm older. And it's just, it brings a new word to me for like art, because there's way more than just a pencil and paper. There's so many other things to it. So that's your high chair in the gallery, right? Yeah. Wow. My bassinet is also an art piece. Oh, yeah. My baby teeth are an art piece. <laughs> so, fair game, or anything that's kind of fair game. My books are an art piece. <laughs> Her Disney books. Yeah, I came home one day from school and she chopped them all up to make red diagrams, but they're cool work, so I can't complain. Uh, she, I think she praises uh, the, the, the humane and the a humanity in people, and she uh, reduces the world to a minute moment that other people can share and uh, and take with them when you see when you see her art. So thank you, Kim, uh, for being here and for being my friend. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>